never knew how to tell you. I would tell be able what? to talk about my Can life. You what I have ever loved a lot. I have a two arms. You want me to say it out loud? It is only at places like this where I get an opportunity to exhibit my work. Unfortunately, the people that I photograph cannot be here with me. For the past three years, I've been capturing images of black lesbian lives, exploring our sexualities. It doesn't matter whether the viewer is black or white, the reaction is always the same. I always wonder, what the response would be if I were to show these images on the street. I wasn't prepared for the effects that my photographs will have on people. I only wanted to share with the viewers that there is more to lesbianism than what normally meets the eye. Our lives, our relationships, our struggle. All around us, there's still violence. They still preach of this. Black lesbians have very low visibility in terms of our past. Their images, they're in your face, and so it's very hard to, to be in denial when you're looking at these images. The images are very strong and also is a way of enticing people who first see the images to get their curiosity aroused to go more deeply into the text and read the text. At worst, you know, they open people's eyes. We are at that crucial time where photography in South Africa, 10 years after democracy, has actually now established a new identity. From a number of, of photographers, there was a very strong support. Uh, people believing very strongly that these pictures need to be shown, need to get out. On the other hand, there were people that felt uh, that the photographs are a little bit too provocative, that one should put a little bit of a layer before you actually show it to public. I think it was quite a shock to many of the classmates. Um, a lot of uncertainty of pornography, uh, questions about what your right as a photography is. There was a resistance coming from them, which was good. As the project continued, I think they became a little bit more open, a little bit more aware, and it definitely has been a learning process for them. Their own issues about sexuality, gay and lesbian issues, I think they wanted perhaps a little bit more neutrality, uh, but got, got away of it. Yeah. This is taken of a woman two days after she was raped. I think that it's particularly difficult if you are someone who's gay, whether or man or woman, and you've been raped. I think it's doubly degrading and humiliating and, and difficult to come to terms with. This is our most sacred area. We don't allow other people into that area freely or willingly. If you look at the placing of the hands, she's got her hands here, but she's not quite touching. Her hands are, are above it. So her most sacred place has been wounded. It's only by consent that we allow other people to touch us there. Here she's been deliberately violated. 
She's going to have to relearn confidence in her sexuality. These are not only subjects, these are my people. They describe the person I am. They are my friends. I have respect for them and value them. I understand where they come from in our life, in our communities. The lesbian gym is because of how we were previously and currently disadvantaged as lesbians. We are still oppressed as much as we were oppressed before. So nothing has changed. So we decided that we need the gym that will identify with our sexuality, with everything that we are. Young lesbian women join teams, soccer teams in the townships. We have a national soccer team, but they're not even able to play because there's still discrimination within female teams in this country. We have lesbian women being kicked out of soccer teams. No matter how talented they are, they get kicked out of the teams. And I think we generally need a social space that will make us feel comfortable, where we don't have to hide who we are, where we can express our full identity while at the same time living our lives fully as lesbian women. Speaking as a curator first before I speak as a, as, a, as a person or as a mother, the photographer has gone into the subject matter with, with no apologies. The one reservation that I have, as a, as a straight person, if I were to deal with my sexuality, I may deal with it completely differently from this. Oh, 
In other African states, street photography makes the art accessible to everyone. I would have liked to make a living being a street photographer myself, but I chose to deal with political photography that focused on our sexuality. But in my heart, I still am a street photographer. My immediate reaction is uh, shock, but um, I am a uh, lesbian woman, so therefore I have a general understanding of her work. For women loving women, there are no better methods for protection. The government provide condoms, but where are the dental dams? Do you even know what a dental dam is? Especially the bandage pieces for me, it stands out because it's that moment that you have discomfort with the way that you are. It's the sensitivity and the humanness and the very closeness of the person who's taking the picture, Zanele in this case, and the subject. I think it makes you think about what it means to say period, um, in the sense of menstrual period, but also post period as kind of full stop and so on. So I do think that in the naming, but also in the in, in the interplay between the naming and the and, and the images themselves, you are forced to think about the process of looking. I'm done now.